Hi, this is KSP with Tape and a J, and today you join me in the Vehicle Assembly Building with Falcon Heavy. Um, it's the exact same Falcon Heavy from, well, it's the same Falcon Heavy launch vehicle from my Falcon Heavy video. I had it um, suggested to me on how I could improve it, and I'm sorry I didn't get around to it, so I'm just going to use this again because I know it works and it's fine. And everything's good. So, yeah, it's just the three... Um, it's the just yeah the th um, the three groups of nine engines with the um, I think that's those are each thirty six thirty six hundred liters of fuel. Um, the mod, uh, as I've explained in other videos, is designed by um, uh, a mod developer called Kerbex, who de who develops SpaceX ships. Uh, SpaceX being a private spacefaring company. Anyway, um, that's not the point. I'm not here to talk about f uh, how fucking heavy is right now. What I am talking about is uh, this top bit, my little lander, which will go to the moon. Because the whole point of this video is getting Falcon Heavy to the moon. Because, well, I believe it can. Uh, now this lander is simple, it's a uh, two-stage lander, taking one man down. Um, I'm planning to land at a... Um, at a, at a Muna Arch, uh, which I'm sure many of you have seen, and I stumbled on completely accidentally and decided to make this video. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's just as light as possible with uh, just landing lights, landing lights, a little bit of battery, a few batteries and stuff. And <clears throat> and well, yeah, this is for land. Uh, the two outer fuel tanks uh, have the landing legs for landing on the moon, obviously. Uh, those break off. Then this is for, and then the central stage is for launch and return. Then that all breaks off and just the pod return. Well, no, the, the other stage does return to Kerbin, but the pod gets back safely to Kerbin. And it's using an LV-909. And it's fairly standard lander, kind of the same, similar to what I used in my permadeath-style MUN landing. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, that's about the head and tail of it. Um, well, I'm doing this whole mission because in my Falcon Heavy video I said I could get Falcon Heavy to the moon and back. And now I'm going to put my money where my, ma my math is and try and do it. Um, I'm having a terrible time talking today, as you may have noticed. Uh, yeah, I believe that's everything. Um, if you want to find out more about Falcon Heavy, go and watch my Falcon Heavy video. Um, I will see you out on the launch. So I'm on the launch. I'm just uh, finding, well, waiting, well, warping to a launch vehicle. Yeah, I just said well quite a lot. Make a drinking game every time I repeat a word, every time I repeat the word well, I take a drink. It'll be a lot of fun, and you'll be very drunk by the end of this. Anyway, so I got my launch vehicle for, um, well, for Falcon Heavy and my lander. I usually start with it on the other, with the moon on the other side of the planet to me, because then I can get my apps up to where the moon rises. Anyway, this is mainly in three or four times time accelerate. Um. And so you can see the fuel depleting very fast, and me rising very fast because it's a time accelerator. But it's a very fast ship anyway, uh, which you'll have seen if you've seen my oh, fucking heavy video. Anyway, I've ditched the outer stages, and it's starting to burn down rather quickly. Um, but yeah, I get out to 75 and stop because when I'm out of the atmosphere, I want to kind of well, no, I, I keep burning inside the atmosphere. I want to kind of well, I want to start circularizing my orbit to get my apple apps to a uh, moonrise, so I want to start burning around moonrise. Right, so yeah, there's still quite a bit of fuel in this main stage for all of this. I even start even use part of the mo uh, part of the fuel in the main stage for actually um, heading for the moon because there's so much in it. And Falcon Heavy, um, when I first did my Falcon Heavy video, I had I had some doubts about whether it could actually do this, but it really can. I think this uses less fuel than my Morpheus One craft, which if you've seen my permadeath moon landing, you'll know that I use quite a lot of fuel to get to the moon in that. I can do it in quite a lot less. Oh, well, I could do it in Kerbal X, the stock, stock ship. If you've seen my other one where I get to Minmus, that's almost proof that I can get to the moon, I suppose. Anyway, I'm starting heading for the moon with the main stage. That burns out. And this stage, I was worried it would be powerful enough, but it is because it's not a heavy lander. Because... I tried moving some heavy things with it, and because it's only 175 power, it's a little depowered. Anyway, I've started burning right out. Yeah, um, 
I'm using, well, yeah, I, um, how much fuel does this, I'm not entirely sure, but I have 800, well, not anymore, but I started with 840 liters of fuel on this stage, not on this stage, but on, just kind of left, and I've got my moon encounter, which you can see the apoaps is, uh, per periaps, yeah, periaps quite uh, low down, and I just fix my, um, my inclination, I've completely forgotten the word. I think it's inclination. Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds right. I've completely forgotten the word. I'm awful at speaking today. <clears throat> anyway, I actually stumbled upon the Moon Arch quite back soon. I knew about them, obviously, and I had seen some videos about them, but I completely just kind of noticed some pixels. I was like, oh, that's probably a Moon Arch. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's a Moon Arch. Anyway, now I'm switching to my flag on the moon, because if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll have probably heard me talking about how if I change my sphere of influence, um, the game crashes because my computer's just really mean. Although it's kind of nice today, but anyway, so it doesn't really take much out of the video. But anyway, now I'm into the moon's sphere of influence. And I'm just going to go into, uh, down to periaps and burn retrograde if you have never been to the moon. If not, go to the moon, it's it's fun. Yeah, make, make some adverts, but go to the moon. Come to the moon where there's pretty much nothing except moon arches, and on my personal save, a moon base. I should really make a video about my personal save, there's so much more fun stuff. Anyway, I, oh yeah, right now I'm trying to decide, because um, I'm doing this post-commentary, I was trying to decide, is that the crater? Because I was pretty sure that was the crater, where the moon arch is. But I wasn't entirely sure, and I didn't want to look stupid, get down to where it is, and there'd just be no moon arch. I didn't just say it was swallowed by the space kraken. I should have gone and seen the Space Kraken. That's on the bot. It actually is. Uh, Hot Gaming did a video about it. You should watch it if you... Well, the Space Kraken's uh, an ongoing joke in KSP. So, yeah. He went and... So, uh, Harv went and found it, and that was pretty cool. I'm a big fan of this channel, actually. Anyway, um, now I'm tra at Apple Apps's, trying to burn down so that I'll land at the Moon Arch, because I'm always a little worried as where to put... Um, where to kind of base my landing when I'm landing somewhere precise because obviously I don't quite know how much it's going to move when it slows down but I'm getting better at it because I did it all right here I think although you'll see my landing a little my landing's a little iffy anyway so I decide that's probably best and there's loads of fuel left in there but I ditch it anyway because I don't need it so it could take a bigger payload um, proof there there was like 200 litres of fuel in there so yeah you could use it for bigger payloads if you don't know where to download it just go to the kerbalspaceport.com and just search uh, Kerbex or um, SpaceX and you'll get it. Anyway, right here I realize I've got to fix my um, my inclination <clears throat> because I'm going to come in not quite near it and I don't actually quite fix it quite enough but it's pretty close. Anyway, I'm coming over the right crater now and yeah, you can see the pixels there I think there's some flashing pixels because with easter eggs you can always see the um, the pixels flashing like crazy before you get near them and I'm starting to slow down now with my little tiny engine which is more than enough for landing on the moon especially with this payload I kind of wanted to make the landing fuel stage stay in one, like um, like an Apollo style thing, where it, so I can leave something on the moon. Because I like leaving something big on planets. That's why I make so many two stage landers, because you leave your mark. Anyway, you can probably see the arch now, and I'm coming in a little short actually. Um, and you can see me constantly flicking into the cockpit to check my radar altitude, and at four times it looks kind of trippy, but uh, yeah. And now I'm thinking, oh, I'm nowhere near the moon arch. And then I started thinking, is it necessary to get so close? But you'll see I fumble around with RCS and can't get physical time warp to work because for some reason my alt button doesn't work in this game. And that is the bane of my life. Anyway, so I start moving around, trying to get close to it. And I get pretty close. Um, it, Yeah, so I'm just kind of adjusting my attitude, then getting very confused as to where I'm actually going, and because I, whenever I put chase on it just kind of throws me off and it doesn't, it, it hinders more than it helps, and anyway, so I'm getting pretty close now, and 
coming down and I'm not sure my entire I think I'm about a, a few hundred meters above the ground right now and you can get a really nice view of that and it looks like I'm going to come in really close and I come in pretty close, I land just down the hill from it actually how did I get that far off? from here it looks like I'm going to come in really close and I think I mess it up oh yeah now I switch my landing lights on because I have trouble finding the surface um, well actually it's not so much now that I have trouble finding the surface as when I'm using my RCS pack as the guy you'll see um, if that was real life he'd be dead so yeah I'm coming down pretty close yeah you can see I'm really close to the surface now and freaking out about my engines and I'm down but then I fall over and try and correct it then fall over some more and it looks terrible and I'm sliding and then I slow myself with my engine a bit and I'm stopped so I close away my landing legs and then open them again to flip myself upright which was lucky and then I got a little blip there as you may have noticed my yeah, re screen recorder did something I'm not really sure what anyway I'll get my guy out and I think the arch is actually like 1.4 kilometers away which is kind of annoying so I leave this in three or four times time accelerate um, and for some reason I can't get the physical time work or uh, physical time warp to work which is really annoying so I decided just to jetpack over and because jetpacks pretty fast although I use quite a lot of fuel although you have like 500 delta V in this jetpack you can almost get into orbit because you need about 520 delta V to get into orbit of the moon which is loads of delta v for a jetpack i think in the shuttle they had like 20 delta v just for a little bit of pushing satellites out and then they realized that was effectively useless and scrapped it and i'm on 69 percent fuel <laughs> and if you don't get that don't look it up because you're young and then i'm trying to get these lights to work and i don't realize you have to press l i'm trying u i'm trying clicking the light button you sort of click the gear button just to see what would happen i got kind of worried i'd radio back to the ship about that and my ship would be falling over when i get back anyway uh this goes into one times time accelerator right now or roughly because my screen recorder doesn't really do stuff well it's it's a bit awful but it was free and easy to get and I can't be bothered to change it because I kind of secretly like, uh, subconsciously like dealing with adversity. I'm strolling up to it now and I'm thinking, where shall I plant my flag? And I think, yeah, I'll plant it on top of the moon arch because that's loads cooler than anything else. And my screen just turned off because it's been 10 minutes. A bit times out after 10 minutes. Anyway, now it's back on and I'm just walking back, walking up to the moon, to the moon arch. I'm already on the moon. You can probably tell I'm not very good at talking right now. I'm not sure why, I have no idea. I've just lost the ability to talk. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have slowed it down so soon because I'm just walking for a while. But anyway, um, I think this is my ninth video, and I think for my tenth video, I want to go to Juna. But because they're bringing out an update that overhauls save files, I don't want to do it until then. And then I'm probably not going to. I'm probably going to do a point two one video before I do a Juno video. So that's keep. I keep putting it off. I mean, I really, really recently just went to Juno on my save file. I should have filmed it because I got. I haven't got back yet because I did some stuff wrong. But anyway, flying up to the moon arch now. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to point two one. I'll probably do a video about all the new features. There's going to be loads of new features. Korea-y, Korea-esque features, but, I don't, but they don't have a Korea mode yet. But some steps towards it is going to be pretty awesome. And then I'll do a video about that, then probably go to Juno. Unless they put another planet in, which I don't think they are going to, but if they do, I'll go there. Anyway, I'm just coming into the moon arch and kind of slowing down and stuff. And yeah, landing nicely and getting kind of annoyed at that thing that looks like a graphics error, then I realize it's just there anyway. <clears throat> so I just decide to plant. Oh no, I don't decide to plant my flag. I go for a small walk, find a better place to plant it, and think, what am I doing? I'm just going to plant my flag. Oh no, I went to check out the kind of really sh sheer rise in rock on the moon arch. <clears throat> now I plant my flag and keep trying to turn my lights on and for some reason don't give up on that I'll figure it out in a bit I think, yeah um, anyway 
plunder my flag, which is the wrong way around. I could try and turn, and then it's like, oh, name it. So I think I just call it Falcon Heavy Landing. But it's pretty impressive that you can get to the moon. Obviously, I can't get to the real moon because the solar system scaled down from real life. Anyway, proof that Falcon Heavy can land on. Uh, oh no, I put something slightly. Yeah, proof that Falcon Heavy can land on and return from the moon. I think that's what I put. Yeah. Anyway, like I say, two one should be pretty good. They've got. Uh, yeah, that's what I put. Anyway, two one should be pretty good because. Um, you're going to be able to train, or not train, maybe select astronauts, kind of they're updating loads of graphics, new parts. Just check it out on the site because I've forgotten most of it. Anyway, you can see Falcon Heavy 1.9 kilometers away. I'm thinking, I'll RCS there. How could that possibly go wrong? And it doesn't go with that. Oh no, now I realize, is that a sunrise or a sunset? And I went around and time warp and time warp more because the moon the moon or uh, uh, rotates really slow and it was a sunset and now for some reason it's brighter because you can see the galaxy and I go back into three times time accelerate now and you can see me flying back and it all looks fine you just wait till I hit the floor you will be wrong about things yeah because I can't really see the floor and I have no frame of reference and couldn't figure out my lights and then I hit the floor Luckily, I don't die. That would be really bad if I died. I, I, I don't know what I'd do. I don't. There wouldn't be much I could do. I'd probably just end the video or film it again. Not sure. Anyway, I was like, well, that didn't go wrong at all. I'll just keep flying, and I'm really running low on fuel, which doesn't matter because I can walk if need be, which I do because because that happens again, and that was more spectacular. But instead of kind of swallowing my pride and doing it, I kind of enjoy just watching it kind of fail a bit so I do it again because I can't be bothered to walk this walking slow and if you can't figure out it's one meter a second when you're walking and if you can't make it four meters a second with physical time warp then it's kind of pointless I yeah I went to do it and I've got to go to, like take like a rover or a buggy so I couldn't explore that much because I didn't have that much fuel and couldn't be bothered to walk even with four times time accelerate. And now I am just running at like, yeah, really trying to get time accelerate to work. I think I even reload, uh, um, quick save and quick load and try jumping and, oh yeah, see if I can like jetpack along the floor, kind of. Yeah, but the jetpacks are actually really useful. I mean, if you're on Gilly, because it has such low gravity, you could easily get into orbit. I think Scott Manley did a video about getting home from Gilly with just RCS fuel. Although, is that possible? Well, it must have been. I'm pretty sure I saw that video. And I try and quick load to try and reset the physics thing. <laughs> that doesn't work. Anyway. Um, right, so... Yeah, I so yeah, I should probably should have sped this up a little more, but because I've already edited the video and I'm already pretty close. Now I've done quite a lot with the moon, but I haven't done that much interplanetary things. I've done zero interplanetary videos, which is going to change with dinner. Oh, I've just figured out the lights for L, as you can see. But um, well, I was going to do a lot of interplanetary on one of my personal saves, but I got caught up making a moon base and a really cool international sp space station with a fueling thing and making it easy to get to the moon and back from the moon and things and so I got kind of sidetracked and because I started my channel I haven't used it that much so I haven't really done anything with it and I can't be bothered to start making a Juno base because um, when point two one comes out the save files won't be compatible so yeah if you're using Steam you have no choice which I am so I'll have no choice so I'll have to kind of overhaul all my save files which sucks um, but if you're if you really don't care about the updates and want to keep your um, stuff, then and you're not on Steam, don't download the update. But do get the update if you want awesome new stuff. Anyway, I've just started taking off, and I ditched those side tanks because I just want to see how awesome that looked. And just pulling my uh, Apple apps up and 
much firing at the horizon. <clears throat> when kind of launching from the moon, if you get once you get any kind of upward um, vertical velocity, just start going sideways because you'll just get an escape. And if I'd escaped, then I probably would have yeah, gone really far out and may have even been stranded. <clears throat> anyway, I'm just circularizing my orbit. You can see I have two flags on the Mun now, and a flag on whatever it's. Uh, oh, you can see my little flag on nothing out there, which is actually on um, Minmus from my Kerbal X video. Just seeing what Kerbal X can actually do. I suppose this is what can fucking heavy actually do, but this could probably do a lot more than this if I really tried. I'm not sure about interplanetary. I use something kind of roughly the same size as Falcon Heavy to get to Eve, and that worked pretty well. I should probably make a video about that ship. That was awesome. I just made it in like 10 minutes and still works too. Anyway, luckily I can go straight back to Kerbin from here, which is lucky because then we don't really have to try and do anything. And I'm trying to get it as vertical as possible so I get awesome re entry effects. I think I even slowed the video down for that because it's so awesome, because I love re entry effects. And when uh, it's like, if you like, if you like, kind of looking at awesome reentry effects, watch Scott Manley's deadly reentry video. He deorbits the space station, so everything explodes with deadly reentry, and you can see it all burning up. It's really awesome. Anyway, I'm desperately trying to find the Kerbin in the window. That's the moon, you fool. So yeah, so that I can get awesome cinematic view, and I do get it, and that's kind of fun. <clears throat> so I just kind of warp in all the way here and even slow down time just so I can get it in my window again because I like watching it from the cockpit anyway now I'm back on Atmo and just go out of the cockpit so you can see the re-entry that I go on about so much oh and I didn't mention the the, uh, the pilot's name Dudry Kerman that's, that's a bunch of fun anyway you can see I'm coming in steeply just move everything away so that you can see kind of just burning capsule. That's a pretty awesome image. But then I throw out my parachutes to stop the guy dying, and I get Mac effects. I think they should really work on that quite a lot because, well, right now they're working on Korea more than anything. But those kind of things, I think, all makes the game all like really awesome. So, <clears throat> anyway. Well, I have a fairly long descent ahead of me to talk about stuff. So yeah, my next video will most likely be a not like something about the new update because, um, well, because I don't want to do some uh, do do something about Duna then in like two or three parts <clears throat> and then not have the save file to um, then then not have the save file and not be able to finish the mission because that would absolutely suck As, and anyway you can see I'm just going to my cockpit so you can see me splash down so yeah when 2.0 when 0 0.21 comes out hopefully really soon I'll do a video about it then I'll go to Duna hopefully have some fun maybe take a buggy out there jump around probably kill a guy um, <clears throat> so yeah and then after that I'm not sure. Oh, I want to go. I really want to go to Lathe. I've actually never been to Lathe. Yeah, I'm the least hardcore KSP play player ever. I've never been to the most awesome place ever. On oh, and we're about to splash down, so I should probably shut up about and talk about the video for this. So yeah, splash down from the cockpit is pretty. Or yeah, it's all right. I think they should work on that as well. And it goes dark because I'm underwater and I get a little confused. But it's, yeah, it's pretty submerged. And they say this lander can isn't made for atmospheric landings, but I'm not sure. It did kind of fine, I think. He looks alright. Anyway, um, <clears throat> I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like the video, please like the video. If you want to see more, subscribe. Uh, yeah, all the videos I've talked about, and in the future I'll be doing even awesomer things. Um, if you want to find out more about Falcon Heavy, watch my Falcon Heavy video. Uh, if you want to find out about, about, about Falcon 1 and Falcon 9, watch my Falcon 1 and Falcon 9 videos. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.